Welcome to the world of Cloven Hoof! Cloven Hoof was formed in 1979 in Wolverhampton, England by singer David Potter, guitarist Steve Rounds, bassist Lee Payne, and drummer Kevin Pountney. Originally known as Night Stalker, they gradually develop a more Kiss-inspired theatrical show and change their name to Cloven Hoof. Originally, I wanted the band to have a really sort of occult kind of name, but uh, nothing completely obvious, so I thought of uh, Cloven Hoof. The band members would also adopt stage names based on the four elements. It's more of an interesting idea than a good one, because it is very wacky, but it also makes complete sense when you think about it. Kevin Pountney, the drummer, would become Earth. The drums are like a foundation for the music, so that makes sense. Guitarist Steve Rounds became Fire, and everyone wants a guitarist that's on fire, so that works. Singer David Potter became Water, and good vocals are really fluid, right? Just like water. And Lee Payne on bass became Air, and the bass adds depth and volume to the song, so it totally works. And also, with your... Uh birth month, you're either a fire, water, earth, or air sign. Funnily enough, each of our band members, you know, I was air, and I'm a Gemini, and Steve was a Sagittarius, and he was a fire sign, and Kevin was Taurus, and that was an earth, and Dave was a Pisces, so we thought, well, wouldn't it be cool that each band member can uh, adopt a character? This lineup would record a couple of demos, followed by the opening Ritual EP in 1982. British heavy metal was kind of ruling the streets in England. We made this EP, and when it actually came out, it was it was like a phenomenon, really. It got to number 18 in the in the national charts. So we had uh, CBS uh, records. They wanted to sign us because uh, the high chart position, and everybody you know wanted this EP. However, despite the success of the EP, the band still had trouble getting a record deal. Our manager at the time uh, was a guy called David Hemmings. What happened was CBS wanted us uh, so bad that he was uh, negotiating a big deal with CBS. And he died during um, the negotiations. Because he died, loads of people came out the woodwork. It ruined the CBS deal. So uh, in the end, uh, Rob Halford, out of Judas Priest, took our demo tape in. After the CBS deal fell through, they'd get their demo tape to Rob Halford after waiting for the Judas Priest frontman to finish a radio interview. Rob came out and he went, uh, you know, you've just got to be a band, you know, like one look at us. And he said, we, we got a, we've got a demo tape here and uh, I handed over the tape. And uh, he said, I'm doing a Radio 1. He said, I'll, I'll take it in for you if it's any good. He had a listen and Tommy Vance gave us a deal to play Radio 1 on the spot. Neat Records heard us, and then they offered us a deal for the um, debut album. This album is firmly rooted in the dark occult look, which should come as no surprise since the band is practically in hell on the cover. But the Cloven Hoof album really only contains three songs dealing with it, with Gates of Gehenna from the EP smack in the middle, and bookended by Return of the Passover and the title track opener, which apparently had lyrics that were just a little too evil. We were recording the song Cloven Hoof, and uh, the whole studio kind of broke down to this day, actually. Sort of weird things happen when we play that song. There's also an instrumental, March of the Damned, which is a little dark, 
Night Stalker is about a serial killer, Crack the Whip is about sex, and my favorite, Laying Down the Law, is about laying down the law. There's just something about Dave's vocals and Steve's solos that works really well together. Dave would leave after this album, however, to join a French rock band called H-Bomb, and Rob Kendrick would take on the persona of Ric Flair, I mean Water, to record Clovenhoof's live album, Fighting Back. Fighting Back was released on Moondancer Records, which seems to have been formed solely to release this album. And its biggest drawback is the recording quality, because the songs on Fighting Back are overall pretty great, and Rob's voice is an excellent fit. Plus, his speeches before a couple of the songs are the best kind of metal frontman nonsense. In the beginning, the, beginning, the great lord of Metallica looked down on his throne of thunder and created metal gods in his own image. Rock and roll dreams do come true. Believe in us, cause we believe in you. We're heavy metal. The attitude on this album is a little different too, with poppier material than the previous album, including a Tom Jones cover that somehow totally works. Fighting Back ends with another one of my favorite tracks, Eye of the Sun, and more awesome guitar work from Steve Rounds. The band would split up not long after this, leaving Lee Payne as the only remaining member. But in 1988, Lee would reform Clovenhoof. He'd bring on drummer John Brown, who looks like he needs his own 80s action TV series, as well as two guys from another band called Tredegar, guitarist Andy Wood and singer Russ North. Tredegar had released one self-titled album and even put out a video. <laughs> Now cannons roar, the bombs that fill the sky, the flashing lights combining to my eyes. But that's not Russ North's voice. It's actually this guy, Carl Sentence. Russ was hired just in time to appear on one track before moving on to join Clovenhoof to record their second studio album, Dominator. They drop the elemental personas for this one and start going by their real names. It was a pretty cool concept, but the only trouble with having a fantastic concept is it gets in the way of the music. They're too busy writing about, you know, your image and everything else. We really wanted to be known for the music, so we decided, look, let's just make it with music and we'll go and shelve the, uh, the concept. Unlike the previous albums, Dominator is more of a narrative concept album with the tracks all telling a loose science fiction story with two songs from Fighting Back worked in, Reach for the Sky with slightly reworked lyrics, and The Fugitive pretty much unaltered. The story is basically about a space battle with a conquering invasion fleet led by the evil clone known only as the Dominator, seen on the cover. The invasion finally makes its way to Earth and a resistance forms. 
There are some great songs on Dominator, and the sci-fi concept is pretty cool. But once again, the biggest drawback of this album is the recording. There's something about the rhythm guitar track that just makes it difficult to listen to. Luckily, they'd finally solved that problem for their third studio album, the excellent A Sultan's Ransom. The cover is kind of unique, featuring a tabletop with pills, cigarettes, a machete, a dollar bill, a glass, and a picture of a woman who may or may not be some kind of bandit. Musically, the album has a mostly power metal feel, with the occult stuff gone entirely. Plus, we finally get a couple music videos. The first is from Highlander, which is actually about the movie Highlander, which had come out three years before. The video is mostly the band playing on the ruins of a castle and Russ sword fighting until he finally vanquishes his enemy and takes his head. There's also a pretty sweet solo from Andy. Mad Mad World would also get a video, with mostly behind-the-scenes footage and the band goofing off. There's also some claymation out of nowhere. Not long after this, Cloven Hoof would split up again due to contractual difficulties, and it would be 16 years before another album. With the Sultan's Ransom lineup already committed to other projects, Lee had to put together a new group for 2006's Eye of the Sun. <laughs> Eye of the Sun features Lynch Radinsky on drums, Andy Shortland on guitar, and Matt Morton on vocals. Personally, I find this album a little too serious, and maybe a little too similar to the sound of other bands at the time. It's not bad exactly, but I would say it's the least fun Cloven Hoof album. But in 2008, Lee would get Russ and John Brown back, along with guitarist Ben Reed, to record The Definitive Part 1, a re-recording of songs from previous Clovenhoof albums. The occult look is definitely back with the cover depicting the five-legged demon, Beor. Bueller. Close enough. For a demon, he doesn't sound too bad. He heals diseases, teaches moral philosophy, and discourages drunkenness. He also teaches about the healing properties of herbs and plants. 
So a demon botanist, really. Anyway, as many of you know, I'm not big on re-recording tracks and albums, but in this case, the songs definitely deserved cleaner versions. Plus, it's cool to hear Russ's voice on some of those earlier tracks. There's also one new track on the album, Mutilator, that goes into a thrashier direction. Even though this album might be a little overproduced, it still feels like classic Clovenhoof, and the album actually has some atmosphere to it that makes it a bit more of a theatrical experience than the previous album. In 2010, Clovenhoof would release an EP called Throne of Damnation with the lineup of Lee Payne, John Brown, Ben Reed, and Matt Morton back on vocals. There's a re-recording of Night Stalker I could do without, but otherwise this EP is pretty good. Matt's voice works a bit better for me here, and the tracks overall are catchier than what was on Eye of the Sun. A year later, Clovenhoof would release a video for a track called I'm Your Nemesis. And at this point, the lineup changes get even more difficult to keep up with, but I'll try to give everyone credit. This video would feature Lee Payne, Mark Gould on drums, Chris Koss, and Joe Whelan on guitar, Peter Baker on keyboards, and Ash Cooper on vocals. Apparently, Ash was a fill-in for Russ North, who couldn't make it. He sounds too much like Dave Mustaine to begin with, but then talking to the evil version of himself in the mirror is just a little too on the nose. You do what you prove to yourself. I wouldn't be. Naturally, I'm your conscience. So sue me. You know where I am. That said, the guitar work is pretty damn solid. Another studio album would follow in 2014, Resist or Serve. I'm Your Nemesis does not appear on this album. Instead, Joe Whelan handles both lead guitar and vocals, with Chris Koss on rhythm guitar, Jake Osland on drums, and of course Lee Payne on bass. I'm not crazy about Joe's vocals. He sounds like he needs a drink of water. But I really like his guitar playing, so we'll call it even. In 2017, Clovenhoof would release Who Mourns for the Morning Star. This album's lineup has Lee joined by Chris Koss on rhythm guitar, Luke Hatton on lead guitar, Danny White on drums, and George Call on vocals. For me, this is the first Clovenhoof album to really come together since A Sultan's Ransom, and George Call is the best vocalist post Russ North. Like 
And once again, the guitar work is great. Two thousand eighteen would finally see the definitive part two come out, which is part EP and part compilation. It contains all of Throne of Damnation, plus I'm Your Nemesis, an unreleased track with Joe Whelan, and several tracks with a singer named Lee Small. Clovenhoof's most recent release is 2020's Age of Steel. Lee Payne, Chris Koss, and George Call are back, along with Mark Bristow on drums and Ash Baker on lead guitar. I have to say, there are some really nice guitar parts on here. The first half of the album is made up of unrelated songs, but the second half is a continuation of the Dominator storyline. We've got the uh, section of the album which is a concept piece and it deals with the resurrection of a character called uh, the Dominator and he forges a, an evil sort of uh, galactic kind of empire. Steel is great, and quite possibly the best 21st century Clovenhoof album so far. It's full-on power metal with a mix of Halloween, Man of War, and Iron Maiden vibes to it. Apparently the Dominator story will continue in the following Clovenhoof album, so I'm excited to see where it goes. And that's Clovenhoof, an underrated band that's gone through many different sounds and many different members, but always held together by Lee Payne on bass. Now your homework. Clovenhoof from 1984, Fighting Back from 1986, The Sultan's Ransom from 1989, who Mourns the Morning Star from 2017 and Age of Steel from 2020. I would also include Dominator if it weren't for the sound issues. I think there are some issues on Fighting Back, but they don't affect that album as much to me. For extra credit, the opening Ritual EP is great, and the Definitive Part 1 and Part 2 cover the other stuff pretty well with better recordings. Let me know what you think below, and thanks for watching. Thank you! Good night! May the elements! Forces be with you!